These notes are dated June 3rd, 2015, and they're the areas to dodge and areas to burn on an image. Dodge and burn, you can also think of as lighten and darken, and the reason for using dodge and burn is to accentuate the face even further. So you can make jawline stronger, you can accentuate cheekbones or collarbones, and this is done by adding darkness and lightness in the image using layer masks and adjusting just those areas so it adds more contrast to the image instead of expanding on the whole thing. For instance, if right now I were to say, hey Google, turn on desk lamp, you can see that it adds light just on this portion of my face and not the entire background. If I said, hey Google, turn on video light, you'll see that now it's going to add a light that brightens the entire background because it's not as spot focused. So by using dodge and burn, we can accentuate parts of our image. This is in essence what good makeup artists do when they follow the contouring procedures and add bronzer and whatever they use to lighten the face in order to add more detail on the cheekbones and the jawline. So let's hop into Capture One Pro 20 and I will tell you the seven areas to lighten and five areas to darken to make your portrait images pop. You can also do this in other software software and on landscape and automotive photos, but learning it in portraits is going to help a lot. And in the next video, we'll look at how we use dodge and burn to add muscles to our fitness images. Let's get started. So here is the image of Sydney completed in Capture One Pro 20 with dodge and burn. It is a very subtle effect that we are going for. And you can see the difference here as I turn off the layers. So if we turn off the darkening portions, you can see there's the cheekbone and the sides of the nose. So these were darkened before. And if I over exaggerate this, we can see the areas where we masked. So that was the burn area. And then if we turn off the lighten layer, also known as dodge, we can see the areas highlighted, which included the forehead, the cheekbones and the chin. So again, if I exaggerate this by boosting the exposure, you can see that we have applied the effect in these highlighted areas and it makes a difference again. So here's the original image, the brightened areas, the darkened areas, and then if we edit the eyes, that is our final portrait edit. And the key thing to keep in mind is subtlety. So we are gonna start, it's not gonna look great. As you can see, the makeup artist just puts a straight line of bronzer, and then we're going to feather our layer mask to make it look a little bit better and reset the file. So you can see this is exactly how it came out of the camera. Now we have just the background layer selected. And what I'm gonna do is of course, first add just a little bit of contrast. I can change the exposure, so I'm gonna bring it down. And then I'm actually gonna go into my black and white editor and I'm going to bring down the reds and bring down yellow. And this is gonna let me visually see the areas better of where I should dodge and where I should burn. For instance, we can see this area on the cheek. It's already darker in real life and this area of the chin is brighter. And we're essentially going to just make adjustments to those areas to make the bright areas brighter, such as the forehead and the middle of the nose and the dark areas darker. Right now on the screen, you are seeing the drawing I put up and I listed on the left side, all the areas that you should be lightening and on the right side, all the areas you should darken. So now let's follow the steps in Capture One to do this. So we're going to hold down and create a new empty layer. We're gonna call this one Dodge. I'm gonna put in parentheses Lighten so you can follow along here. And I'm gonna set the exposure super bright. So I have it up at plus four. And we're gonna tone that down later on, but we're gonna start there. And I'm going to change my brush flow to 25 and have my hardness at zero with a varying size depending on how big the subject is in your image. So I'm gonna start with a larger brush. So you can see we're already brightening the forehead and by using the left bracket key on my keyboard, I can make that a little bit smaller and I'm gonna make it smaller again. And now you can see we have brightened the forehead very intensely. We're gonna continue with the same process and start with a larger brush, go from the forehead down to the tip of the nose, making a T shape. So we're gonna do this again and do a smaller brush one more time. And this way it's highlighted. This is just like if we were using a brush in real life, we're gonna start with a broader stroke and then narrower to get on the details. So we have the forehead and the center of the nose. Then we're gonna go right above the right eye. So we are going to simply highlight above the right eye do a smaller brush, same thing again, build on top of it, and then left eye, and same thing again. And you might be asking, why do we go over it again? And the reason being is we have the flow set at 25, which means it's applying 25% of the effect each time we, we brush. So if, for instance, I were to brush here, you can see that it is lightly applying the effect. If I go over a second time, it's gonna become brighter. If I go over a third time, brighter still. And then the fourth time, now it's at 100%. So if we look at the level of red depth, if we press M to see the mask, you can see that it's fully red here, whereas it's just lightly red in these areas. And then we're going to go under the eyes as well to remove some of those eye bags. So I'm gonna go right here on the left side with the cheek. We did the right side. Now we're going to do the chin. 
And you'll also want to do the center of anything else showing in the image, such as arms, legs, fingers, or wrists. Since we don't really have anything else showing, it's just a headshot. We are set here, and now we can see before, after, and this does look terrible. So I'm going to bring the exposure down. So it's just boosted ever so slightly. We're going to do about 0.4 for now, and we can tweak this later on, but you can see off and on. This is already adding a little bit of pop to the skin in our image and helping to structure the face. Now we're going to create another empty layer. We're going to call this one burn. And so these are the darkened areas and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to have our brush settings the same, but I'm going to go negative four this time. And the first area that you want to burn is the jawbone. So you can see it's already dark here in real life. So I'm going to use the bracket keys to set my brush. And I simply did a brush stroke here. We're going to do a brush on the other side, right on the edge of the cheek, and then one down here. Then we want to do the sides of the nose. So you can see there's a natural shadow right there. So we're going to do the side of the nose there make a smaller brush, choose the side of the nose here. And then again, if you have arms in the photos, then you want to do the outer edges of the arms, fingers or wrists. And again, we're going to bring the effect down slightly here. And now we have our burn layer. So we can go back to the background, we can disable our black and white edit. And now if we take a look with our dodge and burn layers, there's our lightning layer, there's our darkening layer, and you can see it already restructured the face. Now to make these areas softer, we can do two more steps. We can control the opacity. So that controls the strength as well of the layer, but we can also just change the exposure since that's our one big change here. And the second thing is we can right click on this layer and select feather mask. When we feather the mask, we're gonna check display mask and you can see again in red, the area where it's masked. If we have our mask at zero radius, you can see it's exactly as we brushed. If we wanna soften it, we can go between zero and 100 and that basically just softens up the area and feathers it as if you feathered the selection in Photoshop. So I'm gonna select around 32 here and now we can see it is nice and soft. It looks like we did this with a brush. I'm going to turn my opacity down a little bit and you can see now we have this very subtle burn effect. Same with Dodge, I'm going to take it and feather the mask. So again, let's do display mask and I'm going to soften it up quite a bit, maybe 40-ish, hit apply. And now you can see the image before and after. So that is how you dodge and burn the most basic walkthrough you will get here on YouTube. If you learned something, please subscribe and request more tutorials. There's a lot more you can do with a portrait edit like this. And there's a ton you can do with dodge and burn. You can add more structure to cars and buildings in your photos. You can add more muscle definition. You can give people six packs. You can give people huge biceps. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do a lot with dodge and burn. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next week's video. Peace.